Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I still, to this day, have not bothered to look up what the actual schedule is for releasing uh, banned and restricted announcements. Hey, guess what? Surprise! It's August 28th. Well, it's not buried lead here. Um, all formats other than vintage, no changes. And since nobody plays vintage, and it's complete slap in the face to how magic really was intended to work, um, and not everybody finds that fun... So, not really the biggest news. I mean, honestly, the bigger news is that they haven't banned anything from Modern, which I think is still a mistake. Every time they don't ban from something from Modern, it's a mistake, because there's some OP cards that people are pissed off about. At this point, they could even do something I don't agree with and ban Blood Moon, just to mix up the format. Seriously, though, oh no, your broken little garbage turn four glass cannon combo pile of crap deck got killed by one card in somebody's sideboard. Oh, boo-hoo. Build a better deck. That is why Mental Misstep was a mistake. I know it's colorless, okay, I don't like that, but Mental Misstep would disrupt too many overpowered glass cannon gimmicky stupid super combo decks, and a bunch of whiners didn't like that. Well, too bad, get over it. Build a more resilient deck instead of just assuming you can win on turn three or four every damn time. That was ridiculous. But like I said, that's more the story than the actual announcement, but there were three cards banned from Vintage, so, um... I'm going to simultaneously pretend to give a crap about Vintage and know anything about it. So let's do these in order. Um, Thorn of Amethyst, that has been banned. Um, it costs two, it's colorless, it's an artifact, that's usually a problem in itself. Uh, Non-creature spells cost one more to play. Um, if you played this on turn two, and then made all their stuff cost one more, so now they couldn't get off a spell during your turn, except they could because they could respond to the casting of this... I guess then during their turn, they might have gotten backed up one turn, except not really because this is vintage and don't just assume it's like turn one, two, three, land drop. Okay, I have access to three mana. So maybe you put a stupid overpowered combo out of range and I guess they didn't like that. I don't know. I have no idea what deck this goes in. I can't even name a vintage deck except for Charbelcher. I don't know, it doesn't look too broken to me. It looks like Mental Misstep 2.0 where, oh, boo-hoo, it ruins my deck. Well, then build a better deck. But, I mean, in vintage gimmicky, stupid, overpowered early game combo decks, that is vintage. I mean, that's just what it is. So, you know, whatever. I guess, I guess stop people from disrupting that then. Isn't, like, Force of Will legal in that? Okay, whatever. We're not going to get stuck on it. Next up, this is shocking because it's a Fate Reforged card, okay? Monastery Mentor, of all things. Now, let's be honest, that card was a mistake, okay? That card was a drastic, complete and utter mistake and never should have been printed. Uh, that and the grand, whatever, fire master, wizard, whatever the hell thing, lifelink guy. So, uh, it's a 2-2 two -two prowess for 3. Now, if it costs 3, how the hell is it in vintage? I don't get that. I have no idea what deck this in. It, it was in, and I don't care. Best video on my channel thus far. So he has prowess. I'm sure that's not the big winning thing. But whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 white monk token creature with prowess out without haste, though. So it's like if somebody had a board wipe or something or could destroy this in response, I guess you could respond to it multiple times. It would be kind of hard to stop massive token generation if somebody came up with some kind of deck that just spams a spell over and over and over in a loop. Um, I don't know if people are using this to get out infinite tokens or just near infinite. Because, I mean, honestly, if you got out 20 tokens and then you just swung and they couldn't block, you've already got prowess and you've already won the game just based on the boost. So I have no idea what this was in, but it just looks like it would enable a whole bunch of degenerate infinite combos or near infinite or just overpowered crap. So it's still a multiple card thing, though, because I can't think of one spell that you can recurringly cast over and over and over and over and over without the participation of a third card. And this being one of the three cards, cost three. So I'm completely at a loss for why this was banned. I mean, maybe they'll explain it down below. Actually, they're definitely going to, and I probably should have read it. But this uh, video is already a dumpster fire, so don't really care. Let's just power through it. I have zero respect for Vintage as a format. It's a complete joke. It's a coin flip, and it's an insult to Magic, and it doesn't even resemble Magic. In my opinion, it's not even the same game. Cue all the angry, butthurt vintage players down in the comments section. I have never heard such a touchy group of people in my entire life, and you might know that I go after SJWs pretty often. I just now realized that the cards aren't actually banned. They're actually restricted. Whatever, I don't care. Have one of them in your deck then. Whatever. So it went down from four to one. So you can't have four of them. You can still have one of them. So you can still play them. You can still maybe get the combo off, just not as consistently. 
And that's, you know, they should do that in standard. They should have limited Smuggler's Copter to one. They should have limited Aetherworks Marvel to one. Just let it be a thing, but don't let people, like, lean on it. Like, actually rely on it as, like, I'm going to win the game with this card over and over and over. Because once they put in the level of card drawn scry that was in standard and still is right now, you know, stuff like Glimmer and Anticipate and Contingency, you're going to set it up. I mean, usually, like, a, a, a combo that involves a card that's only four of it's virtually impossible, but if you can either fetch it out of your deck or just mow through it, you know, cards at a time to go get it, yeah, you're going to have basically Splinter t Twin, except in modern. I mean, Serum Visions anticipate, boom, 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 oh, look, I got Splinter Twin every single game. There's no game where they don't get out Splinter Twin. I never liked that about modern, the, just the sheer level of card drawn scribe, but you can't just get rid of a concept that big, so it's just one of those things you got to deal with. Oh, so this card is actually unrestricted. So I think I think I said there's three bannings. There's actually zero bannings. There's two restricted cards, and this one's unrestricted. Um, I I don't I I have no idea. I don't know what the hell's going on with this card. Yogmoth's bargain. It costs six. How the actual hell is a six cost card playable in vintage? I'd say somebody explain it to me down in the comment section, but I think you already know that I don't give a crap. This is vintage, it's broken, stupid, degenerate, just insult to magic nonsense. I'm going to take a wild guess that they cast it for free, or they drop uh, multiple dark rituals, assuming that's not restricted. So, apparently you can play with this now. I don't know why, I don't know if just there's a way to stop it now. There's not. I mean, it's not like they said, oh, we, we're now printing a blue spell that costs one and can counter enchantments. Or something. I, I have no idea why this would be unrestricted. Hopefully they explain it down below. I could care less if they do, though. So feel free to put four Yogmas Bargain in your Vintage deck. And then go play Legacy instead. It's a lot more tolerable. Uh, the effective date on these uh, announcements is September 1st, 2017. And uh, on Magic Online, it'll go into effect on the 30th. Don't know why. Oh, this is nice. They actually said uh, October 17th, 2017 will be the next band of restricted announcements. So, uh... That's that's a I think September October yeah that's like three weeks after the release of uh, what do you call it um, Ixalan that's kind of weird I know they were changing something with that like about the, like when the tournaments occur when game days they're moving like everything around so let's just read their explanation for this I'm not gonna understand it I'm not gonna care in case you haven't gotten that vibe already I just hate vintage I hate everything about vintage it's just broken stupid waste of time magic. It's a bunch of $30,000 decks that you could have spent that money on literally anything else in your life. Like, nobody, nobody has that much money. Nobody. Even if you bought the cards in 93, you still should have sold them and bought something else. No Magic the Gathering deck should cost like 10, 20, 30 grand. That is just stupid. It's just idiotic. And then the people who play it uh, are famous for calling a judge over saying that the way that they're shuffling your deck that you stacked and they're pretty sure you stacked it. Um, so now they're going to shuffle it like riff style or like, you know, start chopping stuff and then do damage to it. Now, instead of $3,000 is worth 2,500 and then, oh, you're going to try and get them suspended. And, and then uh, no joke, somebody sued somebody for the way that they were shuffling their deck. They had, they were all set up to sue somebody. They had like scans or something or pictures, I guess, evidence ahead of time of the condition of their cards and they proved that the way the person shuffled them damaged them and lowered their value during normal play and really they just didn't like the way they were playing from what i heard they went to small claims court and they won and the person had to pay them for the damage of the cards okay is this even real life right now is this what vintage has turned into vintage is an insult to magic the gathering if you play it you're an idiot sell your deck and do anything else with the money Plus, 90% or more of the problem with um, uh, counterfeits is because of Vintage. Solely because of Vintage. I guess I could throw Legacy in there too. Yeah, there's a couple counterfeit modern cards going out there, but it's really just these insanely expensive like Power 9 and stuff. If it's on the restricted list, there are more uh, uh, counterfeit copies of it than real ones in existence in pretty much everybody's estimation. So people are getting ripped off left and right, suing each other. A friend of mine is suing somebody else now because they sold them fake cards and it was a couple grand worth. Like this ain't no joke. So vintage has, has uh, devolved into fake cards, counterfeits, fake cards being not caught at tournaments, people suing each other. It, it's a joke. It is an insult and a joke. If I was Wizards, I'd have at least a shred of self-respect for the company and the game and just 
not have vintage at any tournament. So, vintage mini rant over, let's read about the slight adjustments to vintage because everybody gives a crap now at this point. Recently, both Paper and Magic Online Vintage metagames have been in an unhealthy place. They've been in an unhealthy place for about 15 years, Wizards. Get a clue. Anyway, due to the prevalence of uh, and performance of two top decks, Shops and Mentor. Oh, apparently, the whole deck revolves around Mentor. Who would have thought? Data from 12 recent Vintage Challenges reinforces this, with 40% of the top eight being Shops and 30% being Mentor. Holy crap. Then again, this is vintage. There's just a couple broken decks that are virtually unstoppable, and if you don't have a way to counter them on, like, turn two, you're dead. So, yeah. I don't know what they expected. A healthy metagame with 12 decks? Hell no. Not in vintage. Anyway, uh, both decks feature strategies that are powerful, stifle diversity, and can be frustrating to play against. Yeah, you basically need a counter, you're dead. It's just like what I said. Monastery Mentor has emerged as the clear best win condition for blue decks. Wow, wouldn't have thought. And can be difficult to combat and recover from due to the number of powerful zero and one cost non-creature spells available in this format. Oh, I see. I see what they're doing. They're probably hitting it with like show and tell or something. Anyway, uh, in an effort to weaken such strategies and offer more diversity and choice of win conditions, Monastery Mentor is restricted. So you can still play one copy. You can still put it in your blue deck. They just powered it way down, which that's very appropriate. Next up, it says Mishra's Workshop-based decks, which let's see what that is. Never heard of that card. Uh, it's, oh my god, why is this a card? Who, whoever printed this better no longer li uh, live, live at Wizards. They better no longer live at Wizards. They're getting evicted or work there. Um, it's a land. It comes in untapped, and it taps for three mana. Yep, it's Black Lotus, basically. Uh, it is three colorless or generic, I should say. No, it actually... No, it should be colorless. Wow, they got the symbol wrong. That's weird. Uh, spend this mana only to cast artifact spells. Well, great. Wonderful. I mean, you pulled three. You could probably get, like, freaking three artifact spells off of that. Yeah, gee, you think three mana on turn one's a little broken? Just a little bit? Just a hair? God, Vintage is such a just pile of crap. It's just, it's so not magic. Anyway, Mishra's Workshop-based decks have been dominating the Vintage meta game with explosive mana... Really? Powerful threats and artifacts that disrupt the opponent's ability to cast spells. Yeah, like Chalice of the Void. Uh, this has been especially evident on Magic Online. In order to weaken the shop's deck in a manner that promotes more interactive gameplay and reduces the impact of being on the play versus on the draw, once again, welcome to Vintage, where whoever goes first wins. I don't know why this is news to you or why you think that'll change. Anyway, we've chosen to look at, at this third category of cards... I don't know what they're talking about. Thorn of Amethyst and uh, Sphere of Resistance. And they're both candidates. So they went with Thorn. I don't know why. The clear option should have been Sphere, but whatever. Uh, Thorn is the more powerful disruptive tool in the shop stack. No, it isn't. It, it is not. It just isn't. Thorn makes non-creature spells cost one more. Sphere makes all spells cost one more. So what's the most disruptive? Sphere. I mean, I guess, like, Thorn, you yourself could play creature spells, but then your opponent could play creature spells. So it should be a wash, except that you're the one building the deck and putting it in it. Whatever. I'm sure they're referring to a very specific deck with very specific cards. Anyway, it says it allows the deck to continue applying creature-based threats unimpeded. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. The case for restricting Sphere of Resistance instead is to avoid splash damage on other archetypes. I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, other non-shops creature decks also use Thorn, Thorn of Amethyst. So, I don't get where they're going with that, and I, like I said, don't care. Uh, however, given the strength of shops in the current metagame and a restriction uh, weakening the other top deck, uh, we decided to make uh, the more impactful change. I guess, I mean, the consequence of having to pack your deck full of a whole bunch of non-creature spells, which means you cannot answer them with, like, counter spells and kill spells... I don't know, unless they're like, you know, ETB effects on creatures, whatever. I don't know about or care about Vintage. Gonna keep saying it, never gonna not be true. So it says, uh, as we observe the Vintage metagame evolve, we also reevaluate cards already restricted to see if they might be safe to unrestrict. With Vintage, one of our guiding philosophies is to let players play with as many cards as possible. It's the only sanctioned format where cards like the Power 9 and Library of Alexandria are legal, after all. That's why it's broken, that's why it's stupid. They didn't write that. I added that. <laughs> if, if they would have added that, 
Oh my god. Uh, we discussed two cards as candidates for unrestriction. Oh my god, they did not just say that. They did not just say that. Yogmoth's Bargain and Windfall. I'm going to look up what just happened to the price graph on Windfall. Just for a second. Let, let's, let's look that up. Well, would you look at that? It's almost like there was a giant freaking price spike. Oh my god, wizards, you idiots. You do not tell people this is the most likely candidate for unbanning. This was the second place one. Watch for us to unban it in the future. Literally, we're telling you to go buy up 36 copies of it because it might go up in the future. You don't do that. It causes a price spike. Oh my god. And if they don't unban it ever, people are going to be pissed. If they do unban it, people are going to be pissed. Do not show your hand on a potential unban that's still on the table. Holy crap, that was stupid. Oh my god, unbelievable. Anyway, since these cards were restricted, other more powerful draw engines have been introduced, such as Grizzlebrand and Paradoxical Outcome. In this case, we've decided to unrestrict Yagmoth's Bargain as a safer first step. Windfall has a heavy reliance on play versus draw... Obviously, so does Vintage, the whole rest of Vintage, and is pitchable to force of will. Don't know what that means, don't care. It would be a greater risk to unrestrict, especially at a time when we are weakening shops and natural predator storm decks. Uh, it's still a card we'll continue discussing in the long term. Oh my god, spell it right out for him. And we'll be listening to community feedback on that point, which I'm sure will be accurate and unbiased now that everybody bought up 100 copies each. Finally, the next banner restricted announcement will be October 17th. We wanted to balance the needs of Pro Tour competitors to test for Pro Tour Ixalan against those of making... This is the worst sentence ever. Those of making sure we have our fingers on the pulse of formats if anything does need fixing. I couldn't tell you what that sentence means. I could read it eight more times. Anytime later and we risk disrupting the Pro Tour... See, they're assuming I know or care when the Pro Tour is, and they're completely wrong on that account, too. Anyway, any time later, we risk disrupting the Pro Tour or the standard Grand Prix that follow. Um, any earlier, and we wouldn't have the right data to make the best decisions. So is it after the Pro Tour? Like, well, I don't get what they're getting at, and whatever, who cares. Uh, publishing on Tuesday allows us to take the results of Nationals tournaments into consideration before finalizing any potential changes. I also don't know or care what Nationals is, so I don't get what they're getting at, what's between what, whatever. I'm sure they'll screw up the ban decision. So what do you guys think of this? Um, if you think anything other than who cares, I don't have a billion dollars, I don't play vintage and it's an insult to magic and I hate it, then I don't want to hear about it. Vintage is a pile of garbage, it's unplayable, it's stupid, the decks cost too much and I wish it would go away. I'm really sick of stupid pissed off people who spent like thousands of dollars that they know they shouldn't have on a deck and now they just can't handle me criticizing the format and they just lose their shit down in the comment section. If that's you, actually do leave a comment all pissy about it and calling me names and stuff because then I'll know to ban you. Screw Vintage. This entire video you should have stopped watching at um, they didn't ban anything in a format that anybody gives a crap about. <laughs> I mean, after that, oh, a bunch of broken and overpowered crap was restricted and some other broken and overpowered crap was unrestricted so that it can compete slightly differently with a bunch of other broken crap. Wow, what a great adjustment. I'll jump right into Vintage as soon as I win the Powerball. Don't hold your breath, everybody. I'll see you guys next video.